selling your single family home rental and trading up to, into a large commercial property without paying taxes is one of the greatest wealth building tools that ever existed, still exists today. Let me explain. This is what I did. I took my single family home rental and a little bit of cash flow and I sold it and I took 100% of my profits or 100% of my equity and I purchased a 44 unit apartment building without paying taxes again, right? Not only did that increase my net worth, it also increased my cash flow enough where I could leave my job as an, as an engineer, all right? So let's say that this is you, right? So let's say that you have multiple single family homes, okay? And you bought them with the intent of using them to assist you with your retirement or at least set you up for the retirement, but it quite didn't work out that way because of the low cash flow, the number of repairs, uh, maybe the management issues. What do you do, right? How do you get uh, on track towards retirement? I have an idea, right? How about bundling your multiple single family home properties and, and selling them without paying taxes again and, and trade up into a Starbucks, into a triple net lease investment where you have no landlord responsibilities and perhaps you have a 15 year lease. Not only does this increase your net worth, but it also stabilizes your cash flow for the next 15 years. How do you do that? Well, that's what we call a 1031 exchange and that's what this video is about. It's also known as a 1031 tax deferred exchange. And that's what I'll be talking about today. Hello everyone, my name is Peter Harris. I am the author of this book, Commercial Real Estate Investing for Dummies. I also have my new bestseller called Commercial Real Estate for Beginners. And guess what? We are now the number one rated YouTube channel on the commercial real estate investing of all time. And that's because of you uh, out there. So thank you very much. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take your rental property and trade it up into a larger commercial property, increasing your net worth, increasing your cash flow without paying taxes. Let's get started. All right, here's the case study. And let me say this again, that the 1031 exchange is one of the most powerful tools out there to build wealth in real estate by paying no taxes or by deferring taxes if done the right way. So I'm going to start this case study off by giving you the problem and then the solution and then moving on from there so you can really get it. All right? So here's the problem. The problem is you have a single family home with equity. That's a good problem, right? Uh, secondly, you have a little bit of cash flow. That's also pretty good. But here's the problem. Your intent when you started purchasing single family homes were to buy multiple single family homes so that you can increase your cash flow so it can set you up to retire, right? Or leave your job, or perhaps if you were to get downsized at your job, you could still pay the bills with the cash flow from the multiple single family homes, uh, or perhaps you could leave your job, right? Many of you, that's your goal. Or maybe this one, to pay the kids college tuition when the time comes. But here's the problem, right? your plan isn't working out the way you planned, right? And one, the main reason why is because it's taking too long, right? This is a, buying single family homes is the long way of achieving uh, the goals, right? So that's the problem. Here's the solution. The solution is based upon the 1031 exchange. The solution is to sell your single family home rentals, all of them, or the ones with the equity, and perform a 1031 exchange or 1031 tax deferred exchange where you pay no taxes and purchase either a triple net lease investment that I explained before, uh, a large apartment building, a shopping center, uh, industrial building, office building, warehouse, mobile home parks, self storage, what have you, right? If you do it correctly, and I will show you in, in, in a few minutes how to do this correctly, you can multiply your cash flow and net worth, all right? So that's the problem. Here's the solution. The next thing I want to do is share with you the three things, the three main things you need 
when considering or doing a 1030 exchange. Let's go there next. Three main things you need to know when performing a 1031 exchange. Very important. All right, so the three main things are, number one, you need to know the 1031 exchange basics. The numbers 1031 is code word for an IRS, Internal Revenue Service, tax code. So 1031 exchange is a law and stipulates that you can sell your investment property and trade up into a larger property and defer your capital gains, uh, capital gains taxes if you follow certain rules. I call those the 1030 exchange basics. So that's number one. So we'll go over that in a second. So the first main thing is 1031 exchange basics, the inner workings. The second thing is uh, not on the board yet, but the second thing is to know what your profits are. Doesn't make sense to know when you sell your property, you need to know what the profits are so you know exactly what you can trade up into. That's the second main thing. The third main thing is what are you exchanging into? What is your replacement property, right? So are you selling your single family home rental and you're trading up into what? An apartment building, self-storage, uh, office building, retail, what is it? Raw land, what is it? So we'll go over what you can exchange into and what you cannot exchange into. All right, so uh, let's get started with the 1031 exchange basics, the basic rules, okay? All right, so um, I have this uh, table here, which I, I think explains the, the, the basics of a 1031 exchange, All right? So two things right away is this is your property that you're selling for $500,000 and this is your replacement property that you're buying for a million. So the basics number one is your property that you exchange into must be equal to or greater than the property that you're selling. We call this your relinquished property and then your replacement property. So your replacement property must be uh, equal to or greater than your re relinquished property. So it is. So you're trading up from a $500,000 to a million dollar property. The second main thing to qualify for 1030 exchange is the amount of equity that you move forward must be equal to um, or, or greater, right? So you must leverage, you must take all of your proceeds here, your profits here, and you must put them into your replacement property. If you do not, if you make $250,000 on your sale and you only move forward $200,000, right? That means your 1031 exchange has failed and you're going to pay taxes on that $50,000, right? And it defeats the purpose of, of, of what we're trying to do here, build wealth and buy more assets. So you must bring your total profits of 250 into the new deal, all right? Then you have your corresponding mortgage there. So this is the leverage part. So again, the value and the equity must be equal to or greater than uh, the property that you relinquish, okay? Most important rule. All right, so the other thing is, I remember there's lots of rules here, is once you sell your property, you have 45 days to identify your new property, 45 days. And then you have a total of 180 days uh, to close your deal. So you have a full, uh, once you sell your property, you have a 45 day period to identify uh, your, your new property. And then from that day you sold up to 180, meaning additional 135 days to close your deal. So you have six months to do everything, okay? And if you go beyond those six months, it's considered a failed 1030 exchange and you have to pay the taxes. We call that boot, okay? Uh, the last thing is you must use a qualified intermediary or a qualified 1031 exchange company. Those are uh, everywhere on the internet. You can ask uh, your escrow company for, for who they use or who they uh, uh, approve to do your deal. So they must be a qualified company. Not anyone can complete your 1031 exchange. It's called a qualified intermediary or a QI. All right, so those are the basic rules. Now, when you, when you sell your property and you're in, a, you're in that 45 day identification period, there are three rules that you need to go by, all right? So the first rule to identify your, your next property, your up leg, is called a three property rule where you can identify up to three properties, right? And then you can close on 
uh, just so long as you, you close on one of them and they're greater than 500,000 by your product that you sold, uh, then you're okay. So you can choose up to three. That's the three property rule. Next we have the 200% rule where you can identify an unlimited number of properties but uh, it can't exceed 200% of the property that you relinquish. Got it? Okay. And then we have the 95% rule where you can identify more than three properties but you must purchase uh, at least 95% of all the properties that you identified. All right? The most popular out of the three is the very first one because it's the simplest. That means that once you sell your property, you can identify three properties and just purchase one so long as it's um, greater than or equal to the value here and you move forward all your equity. Okay? All right. Um, the other thing here I'm going to go over is the properties that you can't or that won't qualify for a 1031 exchange that is your personal residence, right? So your personal residence is out. You can't use that for 1031 exchange. You can't trade into stocks, okay? And you can't trade into developed lots, okay? Developed lots, you can't do that. And there's no, you, can, you can't trade into foreign property, right? So uh, those are the three main no-nos when doing a 1031 exchange, all right? Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is to dive a little deeper into the case study, kind of lay it out so you can see how it really works so that if you have a, a property that you consider selling to trade up or properties you consider selling and trading up, uh, you can just follow this guideline. I'll see you there. All right, let's move on to the second and third main things you need to successfully perform a 1031 exchange. The first one was we just went over the 1031 exchange basics. So now you have that in your pocket and you completely understand those basic rules. Uh, the second and third things are, the, the second thing is you need to determine your profit that you're gonna have uh, to move forward into your exchange. And how you're gonna calculate your profit is, for example, you guys probably already know this, but just a quick review. You have your, your sale price. Let's say you're selling your property for 500,000 you're going to pay off any loans that you have, you're going to pay commission, you're going to pay closing costs, and whatever's left over is what you're moving forward, your equity moving forward. Remember, in an exchange, all of it needs to move forward into your replacement property, okay? So the profit to move forward to buy a new property uh, is your down payment, right? And then your down payment will help you to determine what your replacement property will be. For example, let's say you, after you sell your property, pay off your loan and closing costs, uh, you have $250,000 uh, left over, right? Sales proceeds. You're going to take all, you're going to put that into your 1031 exchange account, and then you can purchase a property up to a million dollars if you're going to leverage that much, right? 250 into a million, that's a 25% down payment. So you can do that if you want to leverage that much, all right? Uh, so when you can, when considering your replacement property, first question it, that comes up is what are your goals, right? Uh, are you going to sell your single family home or, and go into a apart, larger apartment building to increase your cash flow? Are you going to buy a self storage, uh, retail, an, an office building? So, so think about uh, your goals. Uh, so two goals I can think of right away. One would be to increase your cash flow, right? Number one. No, the second goal could be, you know, you've had your, uh, uh, your rental property for many, many years and you can no longer depreciate it. So now you want to do a 1030 exchange, buy a bigger building and restart the depreciation. You can do that. That's huge. That's huge. Again, the beauty of commercial real estate. Uh, so what are your goals? Uh, secondly, is what can you afford, right? So just because you have $250,000, and you want to leverage into a million dollar property, are you able to do that financially, right? Do you have, will you qualify for that loan, right? So something to think about, what can you afford? Uh, and the third thing, probably the most important these days is to get started early. Uh, back in the day, uh, when I first started doing 1031 exchanges, there are plenty of properties to choose from all around the country. That's no longer the case. Now it takes time and execution. So give us a call, get some advisors on your team so you can uh, be successful in this endeavor. All right, okay, so let's continue on on to the next uh, subject matter which is the case study.
Let's go there next. All right, here is the case study. I kept it simple because if you plan well, it can be simple. All right, let's get started here. Um, I'm going to sell my single family home, okay? And uh, right now, cash flow is about $300 a month. My goal here is to increase the cash flow, right? Where I can get my retirement back on track, okay? Because buying a single family home was a good idea when I first started, but there's, it's just not enough cash flow. So my goal is increase the cash flow and get my retirement uh, track uh, going once again. All right, so I'm selling my single family home. I'm gonna sell it for $500,000. Uh, after I pay off my loan and pay, pay, the, pay the realtor, pay the commissions, pay closing costs, I have about $250,000 in profit. So that goes into my 1031 exchange account, okay? Remember, it has to be a 1031 exchange a company, a qualified intermediary that will hold the money for you to make this legal. All right, and then I have 45 days to identify, remember that, 45 days to identify my next property, okay? That's key, identify. Okay, 45 days, and um, so I'm looking at an apartment building, I'm looking at a Dollar General store, uh, I looked at an office building nearby, and I decided to go with the apartment building. There was a building, apartment building called Village Creek Apartments, it's 16 units, and it's, uh, I'm going to buy it for $750,000, alright, so remember the rule that when you sell the property with the 10th of an exchange, your replacement property has to be equal or more. So it is more, 750. So I go from 500,000 to 750 there. So I'm good there, all right? Now, why am I buying this property? Well, the goal is to, to increase the cash flow. So let me quickly go over the numbers with you so you can see why I selected this property. So it brings in $112,000 a year in income. That's just gross rental income. And I pay all of my expenses, taxes, insurance, repairs, uh, property management, everything of $43,000. I'm left over with $69,000. That's my NOI. Okay, my NOI is $69,000. So income minus expenses equals NOI. This $69,000 is what I have left over to pay the mortgage. Okay, so let's do a quick calculation on the mortgage. Right, so. I'm buying this for $750,000. I'm putting a down payment of $250,000. So what's left over? $500,000, right? So I will have a $500,000 mortgage. And if you do the quick calculations at 5% interest, right? Amortize over 25 years. The payments are about $2,900 a month. I multiply that by 12, and it comes out to be $35,000, $35,000. $35,076 per year. So I have my NOI minus my mortgage for the year equals my cash flow for the year of $33,924. Alright, so that's why I'm buying this property. I'm going from $300 a month to $33,924 per year. So significant jump. That's what you can do. And the best part is tax free. Alright, so I'm buying this property. So I, I identified this property. I like it. I'm going to buy it. And then I have 135 days additional to close, okay? To close. This is really important, okay? To close. So I have 45 days identify. Once I identify the property, let's say in the 45th day, I have an additional 135 days to close. Total of 180 days. That's key, okay? If I go over that 180, I have failed my 1031 exchange and I have to pay the taxes, okay? You don't want to do that. So two key number of days here. All right, so I close on my deal. Village Creek Apartments is mine or it's yours. All right, now did I accomplish my goals, right? So, uh, oh, the best part, the first goal, my, uh, my exchange was successful, so I did not pay taxes on this $250,000. So my taxes were deferred successfully. Um, number two, I increased my cash flow by nine times, right? I'm going from $300 a month to like, uh, to what, $2,900 a month, $2,800 a month. That's significant. Uh, number three, my depreciation restarts, right? So I had this single family home for a long time. I couldn't, uh, I, I used up all the depreciation and all the, uh, the tax write-offs. Now I'm buying this 16-unit apartment building. 
a big building, I can start writing off once again and writing it off, writing off uh, all the profits or the cash flow that I make from the property. So that restarts, okay? And then um, number four, the most important thing for me personally, my goals, I'm back on track, back on my retirement track. Because recall, when you first started this video, I bought this single family home, but it was, I was dismayed or disenchanted because it was taking too long. And now I'm back on track by buying, by exchanging into this 1031 exchange uh, property. All right. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, I do have a video. It's called uh, how to turn two houses into 34 apartment units. And that link will appear on, on the screen here. You can watch that so you can kind of see what one of our students did. He did a 1031 exchange and he took his two single family homes and he bought 34 apartment units and I go over how he did it exactly and all the numbers. So it'll probably be very helpful for you to watch that video as well. All right, everyone. So thank you very much for watching 1031 Exchange step-by-step uh, -step case study. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you at the next video.